I'm Kerry Rowett, and this is the Align and Attract podcast, helping you to create your version of an aligned business. Let's dive into today's episode. Today, I have a really wonderful interview for you, and this is a part of the Your Aligned Business series, where I talk to incredible women with thriving businesses about the kinds of decisions that they have made to create a business that is beautifully in alignment for them. And so Nat has been a client of mine for six months, maybe a bit longer. And in this interview, she shares about her current business where she teaches women how to sell with confidence. She is a sales coach. And she also talks about several failed business experiences she had along the way to this current successful business. And I'm sure, like me, you're going to find this really fascinating and insightful to hear about and to hear about what Nat attributes to the success of her current business to, what she has to say about attracting aligned clients and aligned pricing. She's just a really inspiring person, really owns who she is and brilliant with mindset. And I think you're just really going to love it. You can find Nat at Natalie Toll Hop. So it's T-O-L-H-O-P-F dot com. I'll put it in the show notes for you and mention it at the end. And I can't wait to hear what you think of the episode. So come and share with me on Instagram at Kerry Rowett or on Nat's Instagram, which is at Natalie Toll Hop. Let's dive in. Welcome to the podcast, Nat. I am so happy to have you here. I was so honored when you asked me, Kerry. I was it was a hell yes. As soon as the words came out of your mouth, I was like, oh, no thought required. <laughs> it's the best when you have that feeling, isn't it? Um, now, I wonder if you could start off by sharing the story of how you started this business and like what inspired you to begin? It's such an interesting question, isn't it? Because I'm like, okay, guys, how long have you got? I'll, I'll, give, you, <laughs> I'll give you the uh, show notes version. Um, because it's been a really, I call it what I call it like a, and not a normal journey, but the journey to expect because it hasn't been like, here's a business idea. Boom, here's all the money and success in business. It's definitely been an eye-opening ride. And when I first started out in business, uh, I'd actually had two failed businesses before th- this one, this successful, sustainable, profitable business. And it was because I fell for the social media highlight reels, which are still around, by the way. They're just in different forms. Um, but I literally did. I said to my husband, I'm going to do a four-step four step video series in six weeks. You look out, you know, I'm going to make my first 10 grand. And um, that's not how it unfolded. Um, and no one tells you this mindset journey that you're going to, that you're going to go on in business and it's normal to have these feelings and so much stuff. So, oh, do you know what's funny about the question? I'm like, what was the question? Have I gone on some tangents? How did I get into this business? That was right. Wasn't it? Yes. How you started. But I think the failed businesses are really relevant as well. So do you even want to start with those and how they then led into the current business? Yes. I know I've always wanted to do something for myself and I'm actually a chef by trade. And in the uh, chefing life, you learn a beautiful lesson in discipline. So you have discipline and habits and to become a great chef, you have to, it's it's practice and showing up and consistency. And you go through a hierarchy in a, in a um, kitchen. So you get to become a head chef. And of course it ignites a dream of, I want my own restaurant. Um, and so that was my first business. A bricks and mortar business was a business partnership in a cafe restaurant in New Zealand. Now, I came into that business with no fiscal understanding, no business understanding, pure chef, I know what to do with food and people understanding. We ran out of money. We didn't have money for rent. We didn't have money for for tax. We We instead bought, you know, new chairs for the restaurant. We had no idea what we were doing. 
Um, so that was a really good lesson in to not what to do. So then I became a business consultant when we had to sell. And um, of, hey, don't do this in hospitality. Do this instead. So that was a really powerful way to show up with the whole, I really know what goes wrong if you, if you, you know, don't get some help. So I went into a business consultancy and then I decided, hey, this is when uh, online business first came out. I feel ancient telling you guys that. Hi, listeners, ancient. <laughs> but yeah, on the, the online world had started with um, blogging. Everyone was a blogger and you'd have a blog. And so I was like, I'm in a blog. And I had the hospital toolbox. And energetically, that didn't work because it was a should business. It's what I should do. Chef, restaurant owner, hospitality consultant. Oh, it should be a, business, a hospitality online business. Energetically didn't feel right because of that should. So I don't consider that, a, that bit a failure. The restaurant bit was. And then I went into, um, I really um, loved helping the people part of businesses. And so I wanted to then help um, women get back into um, business or career after children. I've summarized there because in between that was a whole lot of other cool career that I did that segued into this position. But anyway, I made $3,000 in the first year of that business. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the writings on the wall, don't flog a dead horse, people right? That's a terrible saying, but it really paints a quick picture on a podcast. And so I was like, I really have to look at the numbers. I've got to look at the viability. And it just, it just wasn't racking up. So meanwhile, you'll love this, being our amazing energy coach. I had all these women shoulder tapping me who were in business going, we love how you've hit the ground, your brand, how you show up, how you talk. We'd love you to show us, to help us move through some confidence issues, some mindset stuff. And of course, when you can't see that for yourself, you're like, oh, hello, imposter. I can't possibly do that. Um, but I got myself a coach and I was able to move through into a business model that I went from career coaching into business coaching. And that kicked off my business coaching life so I went from 3k to 30k and then after that really quickly into six figures so Amazing. that's the journey in. <laughs> and so these days would yeah. you say that the like your business is really focused on sales like on teaching women particularly how to sell yes it's such a good question Kerry because when I was in the hospitality industry and when I was coaching um, hospitality owners in hospitality, you have to be able to sell. You need to be able to say to someone who comes and buys a coffee, would you like a large? Would you like a muffin with that? So sales and hospitality is just a given. It's a natural thing. You just, you just did it. And what I found when I was business coaching women, um, because I naturally sold, because you've come to my counter, you've come into my shop, into my social media platforms, I'm going to show you my menu. I'm going to come and take your order. But that's not natural for many businesswomen. They feel pushy. They feel like you don't, you know, they, don't, they can't see that they're of service. And so I saw that as a real problem and a real natural skill of mine. So I niched into helping um, business owners sell with confidence. And in particularly women at that time. Yes, because I was going to say, I think you are really aligned with this message of soulful selling. And I guess you've explained a part of the reason why. Because like you say, when you go to a cafe counter, you're not surprised if someone was to say, would you like this or would you like that? Or, you know, that you've got the menu in front of you and you can see what's available. But when it comes to selling online and you're there's no, you don't have the menu right in front of people. So you kind of do need to actually provide those offers and let people know what's available. And it's just not quite so natural for a lot of people. Imagine Kerry going to your local cafe and saying, you know, I'd love a long black, please. And they go, oh, sorry, we've just been of service today. Our social media plan says not to sell on every post. <laughs> like, what the hell? Give me my coffee, right? They're going to go somewhere else. So 
that's the absurdity of it is we overthink the service <laughs> yeah I wonder if you can give us an example of what this looks like on social media or when yeah. people are showing up online so are you about selling more frequently or is it about the way that you sell what's the really yeah I think it's a combo of both and it's understanding the buyer's uh, a buyer's journey so often business owners will be it's all about you we actually we've got to go it's actually not about you just because you're ready to sell doesn't mean they're ready to buy yet and understanding um the timeline so usually one to three percent of people may be ready to take the next step and if someone isn't ready they're simply just not even going to take the next step but they're not going to be offended so an example in a post can just simply be if you're ready for the next step do this that that's it you're just always ready for um that one to three percent and again take it back to the analogy of a waiter coming would can I take your order and you go no can you give us a few minutes the waiter isn't oh my gosh it's because I'm useless it's because I was pushy it's because my stuff wasn't good you know and I love these analogies because we can all relate and laugh because the waiter's just going to come back and go are you ready can I explain anything for you so it can actually be as simple as that, injecting sales into all of your work without it being pushy. And I think what I've taken from what you just said then is taking a lot of the emotion out of it and the storying out of it. And something I see, like we've just touched on, was that online, some people feel like they're selling a lot, but you may not even be aware as the follower of that person that they're what they're even selling. Exactly. I don't know about the, I don't know if you guys, you know, you, the listeners have, you know, ever done a, a launch or a promotion and then someone comes along the next week and goes, I didn't know you were doing that. And you're like, where have you been? Have you been under a rock? I felt like it's all I've said for two weeks. Like, what the hell? Yeah, it's most interesting when you <laughs> really know or feel in yourself that you have been through quite a sales period, like a heightened level of sales. And then, like you say, there are people who've got, no idea that that's even what's happening in your world. So I'd love to hear for you, are there some things in your current business that you just feel like you've absolutely nailed that they just feel extremely aligned for you? Yeah, I think part of the business journey for me has been the, the ownership of people by my personality. So if I'm not all of myself in my business or bringing what I want to say to the pla to my business, I'm essentially going to get lost, be vanilla, cookie cutter. No one's going to hear me. It is my intonation. What I have to say matters. That's been really key for me from the beginning. Um, and I remember when I was doing very highly professional, polished, audio cued videos where I was just some robotic stressed person I look back on the videos and I crack up laughing and I decided I was like that's not even me and so I took my video my camera down when um Facebook first had the live videos and I was walking the dog at the beach with my beanie on and I was just like guys this let's talk and that really catapulted my business was showing people who I was without the facade of thinking we have to be professional so I feel like I nailed that early on in my business and that has been a wonderful momentum to ride. Um, so when I'm out of alignment, when th things feel incongruent, it's because I've left, left myself, if that makes sense. Yes. I'm not aligned. I think that is so true, actually, yeah. for so many people and shows up in different ways. But that point you make about that importance of being yourself, I think it's so key because there can be that desire to feel like you need to be more of this or more like that or more like somebody else or more professional or more glossy or whatever it might be. There's diff Or even messier, like I need to be more messy <laughs> like that person or more chaotic and that's not even you. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's a really a real journey, I think, for each of us to come to that space of owning who it is that we are and the unique flavor that we bring to our work. And that, that's that's what 
you know, one of the reasons I came to you is I felt completely out of alignment. There was big shifts. I was like, oh, I feel like I've watered down. I've gone into some weird place. I know what I want to do. I, I know what I want to shoot for, but I feel it feels messy. And so the energy work <clears throat> that you do, the amazing tools you use, were able to help me come back. I want to use the word come home to my original power that I can have but sometimes we just you know it doesn't it happens I don't think matter what stage of business you are sometimes you just need to remember and come back and declutter and you know you're so good at that no oh, thank you because I think what you're talking about here is a very classic story and it's a, it's a reason why a lot of people do end up working with me is they might go through a stage of really being quite aligned and everything's going really well and I know in your case you're like I'm here in my business the next step is to get to here I'm having these kind of launches the next step would be this size launch and then a few things shifted within you and then you're just like none of that is happening <laughs> it's kind of going in the opposite yeah. direction yeah. and then like you said you realize I'm not in alignment anymore. And that was something you really wanted to unpack. Really wanted to unpack it because I felt like I wasn't listening to myself. I was following, um, like you said, what I thought I should be doing or I couldn't hear my intuition through the noise. And then it just it just perpetuates and you can't get out. You're just like this stuck record. It's yeah, really quite fascinating. And that's when I was like, eek, I need some fresh eyes in. <laughs> Yes, so yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think it sort of relates to what we we're saying earlier, but it's like sometimes we think, oh, it's I've gotten to this level being this way. But to get to that next level, that's when I need to be more like this or that or use these yeah. particular strategies or just be a bit different. And then that's when you started to lose that um, connection with yourself, I think. Yeah, I've got some, and I'd forgotten, I've got some really strong values integrity honesty trust like I know that most people have those but for me I I was quite coming quite far away from those and using um the lens of that to create or if I was triggered by people who I felt weren't being like that I was triggered by that and then creating from that space ugh, that's not a good space yeah. and you really helped me see that that my people wouldn't see that stuff that I'm triggered by but if I keep showing up from that triggered space of it, then yeah, it's all incongruent. And when you're talking about that triggered space, are you yeah. talking about comparison? Are you yeah, about totally. What other people were doing. Yeah, yeah, and that's such a risk. I think when we do start to lose that sense of alignment, to start looking around, going what is everyone else doing or noticing people you might see as successful or whatever and what they're doing it's like oh okay that's obviously what I need to be doing I think they're really important conversations for us to have because sometimes we can think you know I'm six seven years in sometimes you think you should that you shouldn't you should be over this stuff and and coping with everything it's kind of like oh no no <laughs> oh, no, no, you've just got to have different levels of those things up here. Um, so I think it's really cool that we're having this conversation because it's not that we want to normalize it, but it's almost like, I suppose it is normalizing, like it's okay if you go to therapy. It's okay if you still compare and you're this or whatever. Uh, yeah. It's, it's okay if you hit a stuck point or if you really realize at a certain time that you're quite out of alignment and you can do something about it so you mentioned a part of that for you was getting this greater congruence or connection again with your own values so that was yeah. something we talk about what else do you think for you helped you get back into alignment because you know we've worked together about six months yeah. at this point and what do you think you have done that has helped you to progressively create more alignment over that period I think, you know, without sounding cliche, but but trust. I had to trust what you were saying when it made sense and my body was like, yeah, yes to those things. A lot of it was just becoming brave. So trusting and being brave to what I wanted to step into. Um, and just one step at a time. And what's interesting enough is I've just finished this, the manuscript of my second book and I talk about this a lot in the journey of you know when you've got to make bold moves it doesn't mean it happens today it might take a year and that's also okay so for me over the six months and, and be longer is it's it's I've given myself time and space and I've never ever done that 
I've got a real masculine energy of let's go, 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 do, do, do. Whereas I've had to lean right out and just give everything space, time, healing, energy, all of this stuff. Mm, amazing. One of the things that you did, which was just so incredibly powerful, I'm sure other people might relate as well, is I think you really reconnected to your own why. Do you remember this conversation yeah. that yes. we had about your why? And do you remember what you came up with? Um, well, I remember lots of things. And I remember scrolling down. So I think, well, one of the things that stand, stands out, and it may not be the one that you can think of, but I'd love for you to share is that you helped me realize that it all matters. So I, I kid, yeah, I was like, it all matters. It all matters. And I was like, wow, that's significant. But I really um, felt pressure as a sales coach to sell well. You know, like you can, if you're going to go do a launch or have a business and it's not going well, is someone going to trust you? Because, so I felt a lot of pressure because you really helped me reframe, well, because you are a sales expert, therefore it's easy. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, but my why, I, isn't, I, I don't not remember, but it's not sitting lucid in my mind. So I'm hoping you'll remember. I'll tell you the way I remember it. I love those two yeah. moments that like really popped up for you, but it was that selling is a lifelong skill. Yes. Yeah, and that, you got a lot to that. Yeah, you helped find that and that unlocked. I was like, oh, this isn't just a one-time, one-trick pony because I care what that with sales. It's not like a, here's a formula, you know, like with pricing or with other things. There's no, there is structure and plans and processes to selling, but actually it's a lifelong skill and it's going to take some time. So yeah, that was huge. <laughs> I forget that. That was the biggest key to it. Like, hello. <laughs> don't you love it but I think you have embodied it as well yeah. you can remember that little piece right and now. she's on my sales page now <laughs> Isn't it? amazing and I think that did unlock so much alignment for you like you said yeah. use the word key turner and I think this is something for us to all remember and to think about when you really access and connect to the core of your message you can get behind that so much more deeply and it helps you to show up more completely behind your message and so you then went into that launch that you were a little bit worried about yes in. Yeah, my, my numbers blew out the water like I I had numbers I never thought I would attract and finding the deeper message behind the why though you know I couldn't have found that myself which is the importance of working with coaches you can't see your own stuff you can't see your own genius quite often. Yeah. You, you think it's not enough, enough or you play it down or you were able to bring some simplicity to it. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you just got your energy behind it and then you just blew up your launch and had like a launch that was, you know, multiples of your previous yes. launch. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Which, which is incredible. The other thing I do remember about that launch is how you just showed up and showed up and showed up because you're like oh I hope I get about this many people to the free Facebook you know yeah. training and then it was like oh I've got to that point it's like I remember having a call and it's like okay well what's your next goal what's yes, what going. are you going to aim for next and I think that's that's that um that combination of I just call it masculine and feminine energy where if my masculine's like yes but what's the actions I need to take for that to happen as opposed to bringing in the I wonder what that looks like um trust that it's going to happen visualize you know so it was really interesting for me to have to bring in both parts that helped me go to those next pieces mm, having that curiosity well then yeah. doing the alignment it doesn't mean that you then sit back on your meditation cushion does it <laughs> but from that aligned space yeah. like what actions do I want to take yeah yeah what feels really inspiring so I'd love to hear what for you are the secrets to attracting really beautifully aligned clients into your business yeah I call it repel and attract so if you come out and say what you have to say on a subject on the thing that you're an expert in and roll it how you want to roll it say it 
and actually show up as yourself could because humans we judge great we use it to our advantage someone's going to be like nah, uh, you're an extrovert I don't like you're swearing I don't like they're just going to be repelled by how I show up and what it does is it then powerfully attracts the right people who like what I say how I say it how I look all of that stuff and so for me that's the first port of call and the second port of call is don't be afraid to ask for who you want are you this do you want this you know, and um, and then you can have tactical levels of having beautifully aligned clients with, you know, having before you, particularly for coaches, um, having what we all know as discovery calls or strategy sessions where you're actually checking out if you want to help be part of their world and can you genuinely help them. It's not just them checking you out. You can decide if they're the right people. Um, so for me, ever since I've done that, repel an attraction piece I have a yeah I have I work with only ideal clients because it's it's who I call in and it's who I represent and I think what I take from what you just said then it's having the courage and the confidence to be willing to repel to be willing to understand that when you show up fully as yourself not everyone's going to like you no but and not, not everyone's everyone's like love you. your message yeah, not everyone liked you when you were in your job. So when we come into business, no, you can't, no one's going to, you can't, you can't be likable by everyone, you know, and that's what we actually don't want. I feel like there's something more in this. I feel like there's going to be some people who are listening who's going, but I want to be likable by everyone. Like this is almost a little bit triggering. I can yeah, feel yeah. Yeah, for some people who will be listening. So how have you kind of dealt with those feelings? Or do you just naturally have a confidence where you're just like, look, it's just a reality? Or... I, think I, I think I look at how I buy. I usually don't buy from a likable expert. I buy from someone who commands and leads. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like, it's it's not, the, the likability is not just, is not really something you even necessarily value. No. Obviously, I'm going to want to like how they say it and how they teach. Um, and it's not about wanting to be their friend. I think it's that friend piece is, you know, you're not trying to be everyone's friend. Um, you want to make sure people who come into your shop, for example, or your pages, that they're the right, they're the right people. You don't want to be wasting time convincing and educating people who just will never get it. You want to have the right audience in front of you. So if you can do that from the get go. Um, and the thing is, None of us, we don't like everyone either. So it's such a waste of energy to try and make that happen. Yeah, I think that's at the heart of it, isn't it? It's kind of just a wasted effort. You can spend a lot of time wanting it or trying to be like likable to everyone and it's not going to work anyway. Exactly. And then I think if you try and do that, and then you bring the wrong people down, then and they're not they're gonna then you know push back on your prices, your delivery, refund, like it just it's messy. Hundred mm, percent. And I wouldn't mind asking you a quick question yeah. around pricing because it is an important part of the alignment in our business and attracting clients who are aligned with that pricing. And of course, you know you can have all sorts of different levels of price point in yeah. your business as well. Are there any big pricing decisions that you have made? even in the past year or so that you'd like to share? Yeah, so um, you may have picked up from an accent that I'm a Kiwi and um, Kiwis in the past weren't used to paying Kiwis American dollars, but they would pay US, a USD, right? And so all of, most of us Kiwi coaches are used to paying American dollars. So we were like, what if we started to put a USD into our pricing because New Zealand is quite small. Yes, we most likely know each other. So as we've started to expand out universally, Kiwi NZ dollar isn't like the Aussie dollar, for example, which is quite universal still, whereas the NZD dollar is not really international, I suppose. So I really struggled with um, wanting to position with USD and then... <clears throat> coming to terms with, well, that's kind of two times the New Zealand amount. That's quite a lot to shift from. And so I was really um, comparing myself. Yeah, I went through, it was the crux of my whole journey. 
Um, and what it came down to is what did I feel was right? <laughs> what mm -hmm. feel, what obviously you've got to make sure your pricing is based on costs and what you want to earn because you pay yourself all that stuff, right? You can't guess it too much, but it, it didn't feel right. And so I now have just got USD prices and New Zealand prices. Who knew it could be this? <laughs> I remember us having this conversation no. actually in a session when it was feeling so conflicted. It was like, yeah. is this a possibility? Could you do both? If it is just such a barrier for your New Zealand audience. So it's interesting you decided to go that path. And has yeah. that worked really well so far? Yeah, I think it, feel, it feels good. It's helping kind of like, it's, you know, it'll, it's kind of future proofing my business as I move out of, you know, I'm, I like to think I'm international. I've got a few Aussies and, and Americans. It just, um, yeah, future proofs my business as I move out of New Zealand. It also helps the New Zealand market um, keep, you know, used to USD dollars or Australian, whatever other currencies. Yeah, I love it. So I would love it if you could tell us about your book. So you mentioned just before you've just finished the manuscript, I think you said yes. your second book. So tell yes. us a little bit about them. I can't tell you anything about the second book except that you're going to want it. But I can tell you about the first book, Hold the Line Caller. I should have had this here sitting with me, but my first book was called Allergic to Perfect. How to Ditch Your Doubt and Take Imperfect Action to Grow Your Business. And I actually talk about how I fell for the social media highlight reels. It tells you the full journey, how I um, then took, I share my six-figure roadmap about how I um, changed it for myself. Um, and yeah, I've sold about 450 hard copies, which is really exciting. Yeah, so super, super stoked. It's in universities and libraries, which is really cool. Um, and the, sec the second book, is a you know now you've become allergic to perfect then there's another cool step there's another cool um journey to come um and they're really different from each other but yeah it's it's really meeting women I believe where they're at when they're kind of in after their first three or four years of business like what what else from there so yeah I'm really excited amazing and where can people buy the book so, yeah come to my website for allergic to perfect and then pre-sale for the next book will be coming up in the um january because so of course you know timing of getting a book out between christmas and new year <laughs> so it's pre-sales for the new book in jan and yes. the launch is well, the not well, the pre-sale will be part of the launch. So keep an eye out in January and you'll be able to see that. But the alluded to perfect is available all the time. Amazing. Yeah. So please let us know where we can find you yeah. and where we can find your book and how we can work with you as well. Yes. So it's natalietoloff.com, T-O-L-H-O-P-F. Um, and you'll find me at website and my Facebook and Instagram, all just all my name. Perfect. That so it's probably in your show notes or on yeah yes i'll pop yep. it in the show notes for Yay. everyone that'd be amazing now that was just wonderful thank you so much for sharing some of your business journey with us and what makes your business so beautifully aligned for you thank you for having me thank you for being a massive part of the of 2022 my absolute pleasure wasn't nat great i cannot wait to hear your insights from this episode anything it made you think about reminders it gave you please do come across and share with me on instagram at kerry rowett i will put nat's instagram handle in the show notes because it is quite long you will not be able to remember it and also I will put Nat's website link in the show notes obviously as well so you can go and stalk her and connect with her and do all of the things this was episode 73 of the align and attract podcast and that means you can find all of the relevant show notes over at align and attract 
www.facebook.com slash blog slash 73. If you enjoyed this episode or you've just been enjoying the podcast in general, I would love it if you could please leave a review or just a rating is great as well or share this episode or other episodes with a friend who you know will just really love it. Thank you so much for being here and I'll speak with you very soon.